Hey, and welcome to our community. This is a social media style platform where you can share your makes, connect with other sewists, and use hashtags to browse patterns and materials. I'm Kate from Minerva, and I'm gonna leave my personal profile link down below in case you wanna follow me here as well. I'm so glad you're joining me for today's video. We're gonna be sewing the Style Arc Victor jeans. But before we get into that, if you don't already have a Minerva account, I do wanna remind you that it's free, it opens up a lot of opportunity, and you get a discount code when you sign up. I'll also leave some information for you on the Minerva Craft Club down below in case you're interested in year-long savings. One last thing, if you could hit that follow button above this video beside our name, that just means we're gonna show up on your feed so you don't miss any future content. Now let's get to the tutorial. So what you're gonna see here is some ill-fitting jeans on me. They did not turn out the way I had liked. I am gonna go back and alter them, but the steps that we're gonna do are gonna be the same no matter what. This is just a muslin for me, so I will be addressing the fit issues later on down the road. For this video, we are just gonna be focusing on the actual sewing and the tutorial. The fit issues have nothing to do with the pattern itself. For this pattern, you are gonna need some woven fabric. I'm using Minerva's 100% heavy textured linen in the navy blue colorway. And for me, I used two meters. The matching thread color to this is Guterman 339. I'm also gonna need a denim zipper, some denim buttons, and some interfacing. It's also a good idea to use a nice sharp universal needle if you're sewing with regular fabric. If you're sewing with denim, you can check out a heavier, bigger needle or a denim needle. So once you have everything cut out, we can start constructing our garment. We're gonna be using a seam allowance of 3 eighths of an inch, except for the internal waistband, that's gonna be 1 quarter inch. The pieces that we need to interface are the waistband pieces and the fly facing. I'm also gonna be using some twill tape in my waistband just to, because this is linen and it does grow, so this is gonna keep everything the right size that it's supposed to be. All right, so the pieces we need are the front leg pieces, the side front insert, the side back insert, the back leg and the back yoke, the waistband pieces, the side pocket pieces, the fly facing, the fly bearer, and the belt loops. The first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna take our pocket piece and we're gonna fold the top down to the inside and top stitch that down. There is a marking on the pattern piece, so make sure you're following that. Next, we're gonna take our back insert panel piece and lay it right sides together with the back leg. Make sure that you're getting this right because it can get confusing. We're gonna stitch down from the top of the waistband area down to the notch for the pocket. Make sure you're back stitching. Then you can open this up and make sure it's pressed all nicely. Then you can take the yoke piece and attach this to what you just sewn with the back insert panel folded out so that the yoke goes across the back leg and the insert panel. We're gonna sew these right sides together and then press everything nicely with the seam allowance to up towards the yoke and then we can top stitch across that with a double needle or a cover stitch machine. And you're gonna repeat all this on the other back leg as well. Then you can take the front inset piece and place it right sides together with the back inset piece. So we're gonna be stitching along that outer edge there. And you can press the seam allowance towards the back inset piece and top stitch with the double needle again. Next, we can take our pocket pieces and line them up on those two inset panel pieces, matching up notches and just kind of wiggling it around until it fits right, and then baste it in place. Then we can take the front and back leg pieces and stitch them together along that out seam edge and press the seam towards the back and top stitch. 
Now it's time to sew the four different darts. So there should be one on each of the pant leg pieces. So two front darts and two back darts. We're gonna sew these darts and then press them towards the inseam and top stitch them really close to the original dart seam. And now comes the little bit tricky part. We are going to attach all around the pocket. So we are going to take one side of the pocket and attach it to either the front or the back, sandwiching everything in place, and stitch down. When we get to the corner, we're gonna do a little clip so it's easier to turn things. So we're notching into the pant leg. And then we're gonna kind of pivot, maneuver all the fabric out of the way so that we're able to now stitch across the bottom clip into the other leg and then pivot maneuver again and go up to the top. Then we can press the seams to the outside of the pocket, so away from the pocket and top stitch. All right, now it's time to do the fly. And what you're gonna see here is actually wrong. I did do this wrong and I know where I went wrong, so I'm gonna show you this anyway so you know what not to do. And I'm gonna show you a pair of my ready to wear jeans just so you kinda know what it should look like. And I will make sure I point out where I went wrong because this can be pretty confusing. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the fly facing and we're gonna take our right pant leg. This is the right side when you're wearing it. Lay it right side up on your table and you're gonna take the fly facing and attach them right sides together along that straight edge. Then you're going to press it out, press that uh, seam allowance towards the fly facing and do a nice edge stitch there along the original seam on the side of the fly facing. You can then tuck that all underneath and give it a nice good press. Now we're going to take our left pant piece, lay it right side up, take your zipper and align the zipper tape to the edge of that pant piece in the center there. We're going to stitch that down, then we're going to So this up. is where I went wrong was with the fly facing. I think what you're supposed to do is fold it in half and then sew the raw edges to the on top of this on top of the zipper and stitch that down then you can open that up and again do that row of edge stitching on the side of the pants this time so here is a ready to wear pair of jeans you'll see that it overlaps nicely everything's laying flat nothing is pulling this is the fly bearer that piece that where the zipper is in front of you see it extends past the zipper and it connects to the waistband past the pant leg. This is where I went wrong. So this is the difference that it makes and this is what we need to make it look like instead of the way I did it, which you'll see coming up. Now we're gonna take those two front pieces. We're gonna sew it all the way up to the base of the zipper. Now we're gonna place the right and the left sides together, right sides together, and we're gonna fold that fly bearer out of the way. And we're gonna stitch the zipper to the fly facing about three quarters of an inch away from the edge. Now we're gonna open this up again, but still keep that bearer out of the way. And we're gonna edge stitch the back crotch up to the curve. Now we're gonna put the bearer back in its place and we're gonna top stitch this curve. And this is gonna connect the right front to the bearer. So I did do this, but I didn't have my fly bearer folded properly or, or lined up properly with the left side. So it should be extending out and kind of a little bit past the zipper, like you can see on this ready to wear pair. So again, this is the inside of that ready to wear pair and you can see that it just catches that fly bearer there. That's kind of what we wanna do. And the fly bearer should totally be folded over away from the leg of the pant to then cover the fly and protect your skin and all that. So your waistband actually comes out to the edge of that, not to the edge of the pant. And that is where it could kind of get confusing for you. So this is my pair, the pair that, the Victor jeans that I'm working on now. And you'll see how the fly bearer is just so funny and wonky. I had it kind of twisted, I guess. And I had it attached into the waistband with the leg of the pant instead of extending past. So this is totally my fault. I should have looked at a ready to wear pair before I did this, but I just need to go back now and fix this. It'll probably mean making a new waistband, but that's okay because I have the fabric to do so. So again, you want that fly bearer to be extended out away from the pant leg. So you can see that the fly bearer should be past the actual pant leg and the waistband should come to the edge of the bearer. On my pair, you'll see that the waistband ends right at the pant leg where it should extend. And then we can sew the back crotch together, continuing up to meet the front crotch. Press the seams and add your edge stitching. 
And now we can sew the front and back inseams. So I hope that was easy enough to follow and you were able to get this done properly by seeing what not to do and then seeing a ready to wear pair of what it should look like. Now we're gonna do the waistband and the loops. So we're gonna take this long piece and we're going to sew it right sides together along the long edge, turn it out, press it, edge stitch each edge and then cut it into five loops. They should be three inches long each. There's some belt loop markings on the pattern and we're going to line each belt loop up with the marking and stitch along the top of the outer waistband. Now we're gonna stick the two waistbands together, lining them right sides together, and we're gonna stitch along that long top edge. This is where I added the twill tape to keep things in place. I took my twill tape and I measured it right against the pattern piece to make sure I was getting the right length, and then whatever was longer than that on the with the linen, I just cut off. Then you're also gonna sew down the two side seams to make the waistband. You also want to make sure you are sewing on that edge that you have already stitched the belt loops on. You can then clip the corners and turn this right side out. Now we're going to take the outer waistband and put it right sides together with the pants and stitch this on. This is where we're using one quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're going to press that seam allowance up towards the waistband, pressing the waistband up as well. Flip the back waistband over to the inside and we are going to sink stitch or ditch stitch that in place. At this point your belt loops should kind of just be flapping in the wind. We're going to tuck the ends of that over a little bit just so that it lines up just under the waistband and then we're going to zigzag or bar tack those down. Alright, there's just a few more steps to finish our jeans. If you're liking this content, make sure you like it, share it and save it so that you can check it out anytime you want. It really does help us out. All right, now we're just gonna hem the bottoms of these pants. So the markings are on there, just turn them up, press them, and hem them. And we're gonna make a buttonhole on the right side of the pants and put a snap jean but button or just a sew on button on the other side so that it lines up nicely. And the last thing to do is press it and try them on. Thank you so much for watching, liking, sharing, saving, commenting, following, and for being part of this community. I cannot wait to see what you create. Happy making!